Hi and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today again we are going to use Lottie to integrate amazing animations into our iOS application and what we're going to do looks like this. So in the bottom of this demo application we have a simple scroll view. This could be an onboarding or tutorial scenario for your app and if we swipe to begin we start to also move a nice animation into our view controller which says welcome to bed and we have this nice animation on the top and if we continue scrolling we continue with the animation completely interactively and we don't forget to clean we use water and then we eat toast and then we go to work and this is our tutorial screen or our onboarding screen you know what i mean with that what you could do here and you could add more text you could add different animations as i said in the last tutorial about lottie last week i am not an after effects expert so what i've used is just a standard file or an example file from the lottie github repository lottie is open source so you can use the complete framework for free and what i have here is the walkthrough After Effects project and I've converted that to the JSON file that we are going to use. If you haven't seen last week's tutorial on the basics of Lottie, please go ahead and watch that first because I've already created a empty onboarding Lottie Xcode project. I've also used CocoaPods to integrate the Lottie framework. And if you don't know how this works, then check out last week's tutorial. It's in the video description below so that you know exactly how we can do that. And if you already know how to work with CocoaPods and how to integrate Lottie, then we can start right here starting our project using the Xcode workspace. And I'm going to increase the size here a little. And then you also know that all we really need to do to work with this animation is to use this JSON file here and to drag it into our project. Make sure that copy items if needed is selected and add to targets as well. And then we hit finish and then we have this cryptic, a little bit cryptic JSON file here in our project, which is pretty huge since also the animation is not that simple. And what we want to do now is actually making this animation interactive. And since I've already added the Lottie framework to my project using CocoaPods, all I really need to do here is import Lottie to my view controller class. And if auto completion does not work yet, we need to build our project first. So with that done, let's import the Lottie framework and also create an animation view. So I'm simply creating a constant here just after my class definition. I'm calling it animation view. And I'm also directly initializing it here using the LA animation view, using animation named. And this is named tutorial. So I'm also entering that string here, tutorial. And with that, we already have our Lottie animation view. And then I'm going into my view, the load function right here makes some more adjustments so using the animation view and its frame and i've just figured that out already where to position that so that it looks good i'm using x 0 y 50 we want the whole screen width so self dot view frame size width and a height of about 300 pixels and next we also adjust the content mode to scale aspect fill and then we also add our animation to our view using self that view add sub view and here we simply add our animation view we could also say animation view and loop animation for now set this to true so that we can have a look at our animation and now if i run this in the simulator and i need to make sure to unwrap this there are maybe safer ways to do that using if let statement, for example. And we should also play our animation. So again, using the animation view, simply hit play. And we also have a completion handler that we could use when the animation is completed, but we don't need that right now. So again, let's run this in the simulator and let's see the animation in its whole glory. So here it is. 
looking pretty nice, but now we actually want to interactively manipulate that animation. And in the example that I showed to you at the beginning of this video, we used a scroll view for that, but you might want to use a pan gesture recognizer for a different approach. If you do not want to have the standard onboarding experience or you want to work with your animation in a different way, but that's no problem. Let me just quickly show you how that works. First of all, we create a function, let's call that handle pan. We need a recognizer for that, recognizer, which is a UI pan pan gesture recognizer that we can use for that. And then we also need to make sure to add a gesture recognizer to our view or to any other view you might need for your specific needs. So first of all, a recognizer, a pan gesture recognizer object, which I also add in view to load, initialize it with UI pan gesture recognizer, target a self, and the action that we want to perform is the handle pan function. So I use a selector, which is located in view controller class and handle pan. So this is our current class, the view controller, and I'm just using the handle pan function with, with the recognizer parameter. And then we can add our recognizer to self.view and we add the gesture recognizer, pan gesture recognizer. So this was the first step. Now the second step is actually to handle this pan and to translate your finger movement to an animation progress. And that's really simple. We can create a translation object here using the gesture recognizer and the translation in self.view or in the view you actually need. And then we can calculate the animation progress by simply using the translation's current X position and divide it by self.view.bounce size width or frame size width. And then we can use our animation view. And that's also the reason why I have put it outside of view to load because we need to access it right now. So I have a global property or constant for that. And then we can use the animation progress property and send it to the progress of our calculation here. And if we now run this in the simulator, we can actually interactively work with our animation. And we might should add some comments around our animation view dot play function, so that the animation does not play automatically. But now, again, in the simulator, you can see nothing yet. But if we start moving here with our mouse or with your finger on a real device, you can see that we can really control the animation depending on the speed we move. And this is already pretty cool. So this is one approach that you could use to interactively work with your animation. The other approach is using a scroll view for a onboarding scenario as we've seen in the example before. And what we want to do now is to get a scroll view into our view controller. So I'm just positioning that at the bottom somewhere, making it paging enabled or selecting paging enabled so that we get this paging effect. And I also changed the background color just a little so that we can distinguish between the view and the scroll view that I'm bringing up the assistant editor, creating a scroll view outlet, let's call it just scroll view. And also what I like to do is adjust the auto resizing masks, pinning it to the left, to the right, to the bottom, and also making it resize in width, just like that. And with our scroll view already ready for further use, let's create a new function which is set up scroll view. And let's also add some comments around the pan gesture recognizer because we don't need that anymore. We can keep the handle pan function here, but let's instead call the setup scroll view function. And also because we need to work with the scroll view delegates, we also adopt the UI scroll view delegate and already implement the scroll view did scroll function that we are going to use just as we did handle pan. But let's do that in just a second. Let's first of all, initialize the scroll view with all the data we need. 
So I use the scroll view and its content size and set it to the size I really need. Our animation has six steps. So if we have a look at that, I'm just using the Lottie test app here again. If we have a look at that, we start, this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So we actually need to define our content size in a way that reflects our animation stages. So I'm using CG size to get a content size with a width and height. And now for the width, it's important that we need, for, that we use, for example, self.view, frame size and width and use that times six because we have six animation stages. And depending on your personal animation, you maybe need to change that. And then for the height, we just use the scroll view, its frame, its size and its height. And then we just Maybe we do that before we set the content size, we use the scroll view and set its delegate to self so that we can use scroll view that scroll later. And then we just use a for loop to go through each of these stages and add some text to our scroll view just where, as we did here. And I'm using for i in, this is our count variable in zero to five. And what I did is for the different stages of our animation, I create an array with all of those strings. So let's just do that here at the top. Let's call it maybe string array and add some strings here. I had um, swipe, swipe to begin. I had welcome to bed, don't forget to clean with water, then eat toast, and last but not least, and go to work. So this is our string array, and we're going to use that in our for loop. But what we really need to do here is also set the labels position. So this is just a simple label, and we're positioning that according to our current page in the scroll view. So we create a label using UI label for that with a frame. CG rect. And here we need to add an X, Y position, a width and a height. And the X position is actually the most interesting part of it since the X position depends on the current stage of our animation or on the page of our scroll view. So what we need to do is use, for example, the scroll view, its center and its X position, and then add the counter variable times the self view frame size width so that we always take into account that when we move to the left that we add the iPhone's screen size one time here, two times, three times and so on. And we also need to make sure that this is a CG float for this to work because I is a simple integer and we this is the actual origin of our point. So we, we are using the scroll views center X position. And because we would position our label somewhere here and not centered, what we also need to do is subtract half of the cent uh, the labels width, but we haven't decided on the width yet. So let's just use 50 for Y and I chose 260 for the width and 30 for the height, which means that we now have to subtract half of our width from our X position, which would be 130. And then we need to add our parentheses correctly here. And then we can make some further adjustments on our label. For example, I set the font UI fonts bold, bold system font with the size of 26. Then also what I did was changing the text alignment to center and actually that's it. And now we can use the label and its text property and assign one of our strings of our string array using the counter variable I to actually choose the correct string for each page. And then we just use our scroll view add our label as a sub view 
and we're done with that configuration. That's not as important as the next step, which is again using something pretty similar to our handle pan function, but now in scroll that view and not using your actual fingers position, but the current progress of the scroll view. So how do we calculate that? Again, let's create a progress object here. And in this case, because we're using that scroll view, we're using the scroll view and its content offset and its current X position and divide it by the scroll view and its content size and its complete width. And by that we are getting the current progress and we can set it to animation view, the animation progress and the progress that we calculated. And if we now run this in the simulator again, we should have a pretty nice solution for different onboarding scenarios, for example, so we have swoo, oh, oh, that's not so good. So let's change that to swipe. So swipe to begin. Okay, so one more try here. And now we have swipe to begin and we're swiping and our animation is beginning. Welcome to bed. Don't forget to clean with water, then eat toast and go to work. And as you can see, this gives you some space here at the end to work with that animation, which is pretty cool and it's highly interactive. And I think your users will love that. And I think you will love that because it's it offers so many new opportunities for animation because it's so simple to add those animations to your application, which means that you can save tons of work you need you previously needed to code animation, animations such as these. So I hope you also enjoyed that video. Let me know if you want to see more videos on Lottie. Let me know what you plan to use Lottie for. I am really excited about that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.